Invisible Man comes out of nowhere to take number one onward in the way back or into 15 or two. The Rise of Skywalker novel is about ready to drop and excerpts are coming out and it's saying Palpatine is a clone. Really? That and the rest of the top five. Let's go. Welcome back to Stone and Watch Weekend Box Office. All right, let's just get right into it. Coming to one this weekend, debuting on the chart this week, we've got the Invisible Man. Now, they win $28.2 million for their week, and all this their total domestic as of right now, and it's worldwide, is sitting at $48.3 million. And coming number two this week, we've got Sonnet's a Hedgehog. They're bringing $16.2 million for their week, and they're down almost 38% from last week. Their total domestic as of right now is $128.5 Five million dollars and it's worldwide is hitting two sixty five point seven million dollars. And coming number three this week, we've got Harrison Ford and the Call of the Wild. They're getting thirteen point three million dollars for their week and hold it down a little over forty six percent from last week. Their total domestic as of right now is forty six million dollars and it's worldwide is sitting at seventy nine point eight million dollars. And coming at number four this week and debuting on the chart, we've got the My Hero Academia Heroes Rising. They're bringing $5.7 million for their weekend haul. Their total domestic as of right now is $9 million, and it's worldwide. It's sitting at $24.2 million. And rounding out our top five, we've got Bad Boys for Life. They're making $4.3 million for their weekend haul. They're down almost 26% from last week. Their total domestic as of right now is $197.4 million, and it's worldwide. It's sitting at $405.4 million. Well, that was just one hell of a top five. Now I'm doing something a little bit different this week. I'm only going to do half of what I normally do for the box office. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree. Kind of make the show a little bit shorter and what have you. So we'll see what happens. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Anyway, that was one hell of a top five. Now they're saying I'm hearing really good things about that Invisible Man movie and what have you. Now granted, it's kind of like a horror movie, but I'm heard it's more like a sci-fi horror type type thing. So it looks kind of interesting. Now, this is like the second Bloomhouse movie that is in the on the box office and what have you. The other one is Fantasy Island. Now, they both had like pretty much a budget of like around five, seven million dollars and what have you. And they're both well in the profit zone if you if you count in the marketing, what have you. So that's pretty damn cool that they made a movie for that amount of money. If you already be quite profitable. So that's pretty damn cool. Now, Sonic the Hedgehog drops down to number two and what have you. But they're pretty much also also in the profitable range as well i'm not i'm hearing kind of mixed reviews on call of the wild and what have you and like then i still think you should have used a red a real dog i think if you'd have used a real dog it might have done a little bit better maybe but just maybe um my hero that the uh, academia now I, I didn't see that one on the list last week when i was doing 15 or two so i don't know where the hell this movie came from but it's one of those like anime movies or what have you so i don't really know much about it but when i do I'll get back to you. Anyway, rounding out our top five, we got Bad Boys for Life. Now, they went over the $400 million mark for this and stuff like that, which is the highest grossing movie of the franchise. So this is a pretty good year for uh, for Will Smith. You know, he had he made over a billion dollars with Aladdin. Now he's close to like a half a billion with uh, Bad Boys for Life 3 and stuff like that. So that's pretty damn cool. Most likely they'll end up doing another one. Let's we can see how that all plays out. So, I don't know. Did you see these movies in the top five? Let me know in the comments down below. Now it's time to watch 15 or 2. All right, let's just dive right into it. Coming to one this week is Pixar's Onward. Now, they're calling it an animation adventure comedy fantasy family. Now, the description reads, Set in the suburban fantasy world, two teenage elf brothers embark on a quest to discover if there's still magic out there. Now, this movie is being directed by Dan Scallion, starring Tom Holland, Chris Pratt, Julia Louis dreyfus and John Ratzenberger, to name a few. And I watched that pretty much like they, they call it a trailer, but it was more like a featurette. Then there was a trailer, and I watched that for a few minutes. Going to say, I'm looking forward to seeing this movie. Now, Pixar usually does a pretty damn good job of being entertaining. So I'm looking forward to the, seeing this movie. Now, I heard that the um, short before this movie is not actually a Pixar short. It's actually a, um, a Simpson short. So I don't know. At least that's what I'm hearing right now. I don't know, so when I say, if I see it, I'm going to say matinee and matinee to most mainly because they're cheap. But I'm looking forward to seeing this one, and it's Pixar, so they usually are pretty damn good. So, I don't know, did you see the trailer for Onward? You want to check this movie out? Let me know in the comments down below. Second on the list this week, we've got The Way Back. Now, they're calling it a drama sport. Now, the description reads, a former high school basketball fanon struggling with alcoholism has offered a coaching job as old Alamana. As the team starts to win, he may have to confront his old demons. But will it be enough to set him on the road of redemption? This movie is being directed by Gavin O'Connor, starring Ben Affleck, Janina 
Gavon Carr, Michaela Watkins, and Da Vinci, just to name a few. Now, I watched the trailer for, for this thing for the first time a few minutes ago, and I have to say it looks pretty damn good. Now, from what I'm understanding, this is kind of like a it kind of hit home kind of like role for Ben Affleck and stuff like that because of his personal problems and what have you. But with that being said, I'm not really, I don't, I don't know all much about that stuff because I don't really dive into that kind of thing. I figure that that's his own personal thing, whatever. If he, if he wants to talk about it, fine. But anyway, as far as the movie goes, it looks pretty damn good. So I don't know. I doubt I'll rush out and go see this opening weekend, what have you. So when I see it, if I see it, I'm going to say matinee and matinee the most, mainly because I'm cheap. Did you see the trailer for The Way Back? You're going to check this movie out. Let me know in the comments down below. Coming in third this week, we've got The First Cow. Now they're calling it a drama. Now the description reads, A skilled cook has traveled west and joined a group of fur trappers in Oregon. Though he only finds a true connection with a Chinese immigrant also seeking his fortune, soon the two collaborate on a successful business. Now this movie is being directed by Kelly Ratchard, starring John Margaro, Oren Lee, Renee Eber Jonas and Tony Jones, just to name a few. You know, I watched the trailer for the same for the first time a few minutes ago. And I guess it, it looks okay. They will have you so when I see it, if I see it, I'm gonna say matinee and matinee at the most. And that's at the most. I mean, this looks kind of cool, interesting, I guess a little bit, but I'm leaning more towards like maybe like the two dollar range or maybe at home type thing. I mean, this movie doesn't look all that bad, but it just look, doesn't really look like all that exciting either. But that's just my opinion. I can't be wrong. So, I don't know. Did you see the trailer for The First Cow? You going to check this movie out? Let me know in the comments down below. And fourth on the list this week, we've got The Burnt Orange Hearsay. Now, it's calling an action drama thriller. Now, the description reads, Hired to steal the rare painting from one of the most enigmatic painters of all time, an ambitious art dealer becomes consumed by his own greed and insecurity as the operation spins out of control. Now, this movie is being directed by Giuseppe Captoni. I think that's how you're saying it. If not, I do apologize. Starring Elizabeth DeBecky, Clans Bang, Donald Sutherland, and Mick Jagger, just to name a few. Now, I watched the trailer for this thing for the first time a few minutes ago, and I have to say, it looks okay. So, I don't know. When I see it, if I see it, I'm going to say matinee. And matinee the most, mainly because I'm cheap. On that, I'm kind of like, Lean more towards like the $2 range, to be quite honest with you. I mean, it looks kind of interesting and stuff like that, but I just can't see really paint all that much. It, it, it's not really getting me wanting to go. I mean, it looks kind of good, I guess. So I don't know. Did you see the trailer for the Orange Burnt Hearsay? Let me know in the comments down below. And coming at number five this week, we've got the Booksellers. Now, this is a documentary on the behind-scenes look at the New York Rare Book World. Now, this doc is being directed by D.W. Young, starring Parker Posey, Fran Lebowitz, Gay Telsa and Suzanne Bain, just to name a few. Now, I watched the trailer for this thing for the first time a few minutes ago, and I have to say, it looks kind of interesting, to say the least. Now, I doubt I'm going to go rush out and see this in the theaters and what have you. So when I see it, if I see it, I'm going to say matinee and matinee the most, mainly because of cheap. On that, it looks okay. It looks quite interesting. I think it's kind of interesting to see that Parker Posey's in this movie because I believe that she was in that You Got Mail movie, which all about was like with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, that's, shutting down you know, big big bookstore shutting down the, like the small bookstore and what have you so it was kind of i don't know it i don't i think it was kind of interesting that, that she's in actually in this i didn't see her in the trailer so i don't know but it looks out okay i mean i don't know i like i said i doubt i'll watch out and see this in the theater and what have you but i don't know did you see the trailer for the booksellers you're going to check this doc out let me know in the comments down below and finally this week, we've got Sometimes, Always, and Never. Now, they're calling it a comedy drama mystery. Now, the description reads, A detective fantasy family drama where the love of words helps a father reconnect with his missing son. Now, this movie's being directed by Carl Hunter, starring Bill Knightley, Sam Riley, Alice Lowe, and Jenny a gutter, just to name a few. Now, I watched the trailer for the same for the first time a few minutes ago, and I have to say, it looks pretty damn messed up so when i see it if i see it i'm gonna say matinee and matinee the most mainly because i'm cheap i don't know i'm leaning way more towards like the two dollar range on this one and what have you i mean it looks kind of interesting maybe but it looks kind of really weird too so i mean it looks like i don't know i just look totally terrible and stuff like that so did you see the trailer for sometimes always and never you want to check this movie out let me know in the comments down below <laughs> Now it's time for Stern to Watch News. Okay, now this story dropped over the weekend. Now the Rise of Skywalker novel is not due to drop till like I believe like March 17th. But over the weekend, like at some convention in Chicago, um, they released some copies of the book. And obviously, shocker, some of it leaked out on the internet. And we've gotten some excerpts from this book. And we come to find out during the part where uh, Kylo Ren goes to Exegol to confront Palpatine. 
he finds out that in, by looking at some of the uh, equipment behind him that he through studies that he realizes it's from the Clone Wars era and some along the lines they realize that you know that Palpatine's a clone and he's just too powerful to be in this body or some stuff like that now now this doesn't really technically bother me but I do wonder why they just couldn't say that or something in the movie so you know or they could have been hinting at this like for the, like the la other two like Rise um Force Awakens and the Last Jedi you know why do we have if he's a clone why do we have to have Snoke right but that's probably for a whole nother video. But if you go and you look in the uh, Rise of Skywalker Visual Dictionary, it says that, you know, the uh, group called the Eter Sith of the Eternal went and they found Palpatine at the site of the second Death Star and they retrieved him from there. That's not the same story that's now in the going to be in uh, the Rise of Skywalker novel. That's not the same story that they were using to explain why Palpatine is back um, in the movie. They don't really say anything about that in the movie at all. So you got three different spots where like the story is different. So this goes to show really, they didn't really have much of a plan. Now there was like some story that seen that somebody that knows JJ, that he was talking that he kind of wanted to have Palpatine come back, back while they were during when they were filming the uh, force awakens, then why didn't you put it in the movie? Right. I mean, you could have put it in there. I mean, you didn't have to make it a whole, I mean, like, like again, the whole clone thing does not bother me because, like, again, it kind of refers to the old prequel era and also refers to the Dark Empire series and what have you, which I kind of thought that some of this, this whole trilogy pretty much stole a whole bunch from. Like that whole BS that Kennedy said that they didn't have source material. Now, when Disney first bought Lucasfilm, the first thing that they did after they bought it, they went and they turned around and said everything that was in uh, Legends, is. I mean, the EU is gone. It's just... It doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't really tie in the story anymore, which it was never really, I know, technically full-on canon anyway. I know this, okay? But for the longest time, that was like the only part of, of new store, Star Wars stories that we were getting. So it was a, as close to as like canon story as we were going to get at the time. So anyway, I mean, it doesn't bother me that he's like a clone or that they're, now they're saying that he's a clone. I just wish they would actually said it in the movie. Now, I'm not really thinking it would have really made the movie that much better, but it would have made more sense. And it would have, again, would have been a little bit nod to like the Dark Empire and the prequels and stuff like that. And that would have been kind of cool. And it, as cheesy as it would have been that he, uh, Palpatine came back, it still wouldn't have been not as bad. So, I mean, like, this doesn't bother me. I'm not all mad about it and stuff like that. It's just, like, there's three different spots, and, like, the story doesn't stay the same, which, to me, as far as I'm concerned, confirms that they really did not have a plan when they were doing this sequel trilogy. Now, they had that whole story back last week about the High Republic and everything. They got, all these story, they got these authors, they got the Star Wars story group and all this other stuff. They almost were basically saying the same BS when they are starting this whole trilogy and stuff like that back after Disney bought Lucasfilm. I mean, it was like the same thing. They said everything counts. Everything is canon. The video games, the books, the comic books, the movies, everything all ties in. Okay, so which story are you going with, Disney? Now, is it going to be he's just back just because? Or is he back because some like weird ass um, group, the System Turtle, that was never mentioned ever before, ever in anything? suddenly like goes back and they find Palpatine, they bring him back. Or is it going to be now he's actually a clone where you're kind of like stealing some of the storylines from the dark empire. Which one is it? I mean, I don't care, but just pick one and go with it. Now I'm looking forward to reading the rise of Skywalker book. I actually liked the, um, the last Jedi book more so than the movie. And I'm looking from what I'm hearing so far, just with that excerpt up alone, excerpt alone, it kind of seems like to me that I'm going to get the same thing. I'm going to like the book more so than the movie, which is kind of a bummer. Now I like all the other books, like all the older books too, but I don't, I'm not going to, I, I don't say that I like them more so than the movies. Like the, the novelization for new hope. I like that book, but I like the movie more. Same thing with empire and return of the Jedi and the prequels. You know, I mean, for me, like the novels just kind of help and fill, you know, kind of help a little bit like, enhance the story if you will to kind of fill in the gaps on, on those too but i still like the movies the prequels more so than the books i like the books because they just kind of enhance the story that's why i used to like the love reading the old eu it enhanced the story it didn't like explain something that i didn't get shown on the screen 
but that's just my opinion. So I don't know. Did you hear about this? Like the Star Wars, the Rise of Skywalker book. Now it's saying that Palpatine's a clone. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you think they should have stuck with what the visual dictionary said? Let me know in the comments down below. Or do you think they should have stuck with the same story like from the movie where it says, why is he back? Just because. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I think it's all messed up. I wish they had a better plan. But what can you do? I don't know, man. That was one hell of a box. It's now Invisible Man coming at number one and almost reaching $30 million opening weekend and only having a budget of $7 million. That's pretty damn cool. They're already in the profit range just in what, you know, opening weekend alone domestically. So that's pretty damn cool. I have to wait and see how that all plays out. Sonic drops down to number two. Now, I have yet to go see that movie, but I never was really a big, huge fan of the game, to be quite honest with you. So I don't know if I'm actually going to check it out. I might. I have to wait and see. Bad Boys, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that they're still hanging out in the top five, and they're almost you know a little over $400 million at their total you know worldwide box office and what have you, so which... I hope they actually make an one. I really like that movie quite a bit. I still have to go rewatch the second one. Now, I did rewatch the first one, and it doesn't really tie into the third one as well as I thought it did, except for like the characters and what have you. Because, like, I guess and when I actually thought about it afterwards, where uh, the storyline for Bad Boys for Life actually takes place, like, I believe, I think it was like four or five years before the events of the first Bad Boys movie. So, like, I guess that's why they didn't really reference that as much in the first one as I thought they would. But I still liked it, and it was cool to watch that movie again. I, I liked it just as much as I probably did, like, the first time. I don't, I don't know. That's just me. So, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, this whole thing about the Rise of Skywalker book coming out. Now, I'm going to read that book. I'm looking forward to reading that book. To be quite honest with you, I wait to see what else they got different in that one. Because there was a lot of different shit that was in the uh, Last Jedi book, too. So, you know, whatever. It is what it is on, as far as that one goes. So, I don't know, man. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. See you next week. Peace. Make sure you click on that subscribe button so you can be notified every time I drop another video. Hey, while you're at it, check out one of my other movie review videos. Or check out one of my drum cover videos. Give it a like. Give it a share. Join in the discussion in the comments down below. Have a good day. Peace.